our lives, our trials, our tribulations, God is not taking off base. He's sitting right there on the throne. He ain't getting up and scratching his head. Praise God. He's already allow the lamb to be slain yes, before the foundation yes. of the earth yes, to take care of everything that we yes. deal with on today. Amen. 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 We want to get back in the book of Ephesians. Praise God. And, and we're going to stay there and, and right back to chapter 1. Amen. Foundation. Verse, praise God. Ephesians chapter 1. I want to look at verse 3. Read a few scriptures following. I just thank God for all of you on today. Praise God. My sons and daughters in the ministry, praise God, my brothers and sisters in the faith. I thank God for you, amen, and I make mention of you in my prayers. Too. Thank you, sir, and I pray, make mention of you all in my prayers, and I know you make mention of me and your friend, and I thank you for that, and I thank you for all the loyal supporters here at the church and support the ministry and the vision, and I thank you, praise God, for just allowing God to allow you to be a member of his body. Amen. And to walk out this stuff. Amen. It's not amen. easy, everybody. Amen. But I'm telling you, it's doable. Amen. 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 Praise God. Verse 3 says, Blessed be God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of this world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Amen. Having predestined us to be adoption of children, by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom also we have redemption through the blood and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mysteries of his will, according to the good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of time, the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. Yes. Even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things according to the counsel of his own will. I know I'm not going to probably even get that far in breaking down some of these scriptures, but God has given me a, a challenge and has given me a charge. Amen. That we begin to look and just see how blessed we are. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I want you to leave here today not having a question in your mind of just how blessed you are. Somebody say right now. Right now. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm not talking about when you get the raise on the job. I'm not talking about when you get the new house. I'm not talking about when all the bills are paid. I'm talking about you are blessed. Somebody say right now. Right, right now. now. In this place. Say in this place. In this right. place. I am blessed. I am blessed. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because God has chosen me. Somebody say God has chosen me. Amen. Amen. Brother Hank, God chose you, man. You can see you, man. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we just come in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father God. Yes. God, I pray that the objective, Lord God, is in seek and sync with what you're trying to do. In the earth, I pray, God, in the meditation of my heart, uh, in the words of my mouth, be acceptable, God, in your sight. Oh, God, we need you. We need a word from you on, on today, Lord God. You you are speaking expressly, Lord God, through your word. And you're not missing anything, Lord God, nothing lacking, nothing missing. But you have an answer to all of our dilemmas, all of our problems, all of our confusion, Lord yes. God. It's in your word. And so, God, we just ask that you just allow me to worship my way through this message, God. That we be edified and built up, uh, leave here changed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. 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 I mean, you know that the, the church is the household of God. <laughs> I mean, you know that. Praise God. Dr. Tony Evans made a quote about the church, and uh, it's a synopsis really of what the church really is. The church is a microcosm of the kingdom, which is the larger expression of God's rule. In fact, it is the church's chief responsibility to introduce Jesus and his kingdom to society at large. Somebody says, my responsibility to introduce Jesus and his kingdom to society. And you get that right there. I already didn't preach something. I already, already have already given you a word and a challenge right there. Our job as members of the church is to live in a way that shows the world a clear picture of the kingdom and that all things are to fall underneath the Lord Jesus Christ. The church should present to the broader culture a working illustration of God's solution to the problems the culture faces so that the culture can replicate the solutions in society 
at large. Somebody say, we are, we are the answer, the answer. To, the to the world problem. Or sometimes then we even know that. If you thought that one day and you got up saying, I am the answer to the problem that's going on my job. I am the answer to my friend that just got a divorce. I am the answer to my friend that son or daughter won't come back home. you really the answer. You know how you're the answer? Because a lot of people live in hopelessness. But we give hope. Somebody say, we give hope. Yeah. Amen. If you know who you are in Christ, you're not only running around, you're not running around crying man overboard like everybody else. When nobody has hope, you got hope. Amen. Because you realize that you are the church. Somebody say, I'm the church. I'm the church. I'm the church. Praise God. So people who want to see heaven at work on earth should be able to discover it in the church. Amen. So people that want to see heaven down here on earth. But if they're going to discover it, they need to discover it through who? Through who I am. Through who you are. Amen. Somebody said we are the body of Christ. Yeah. Somebody said we are the example. Yeah. We are the example. I want you to leave that aside today. I want to build you up today in the word of God based on what God has said through his word. We find out in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul is an apostle. He was called by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We know who Paul was before Paul was Paul. Paul was Saul. Paul was one who opposed the church, but he thought he was doing God a favor. He said in his word that he did this ignorantly until the revelation of God through Jesus Christ came to him on the road to Damascus. Guess what? He didn't think about things. He didn't go back in his mind. He didn't consider it with his flesh and blood, but he said, boom, this is Jesus. Jesus said it. He told me who I am, and bam, that's who I am. My name is Paul now. So he went from being big time Saul, a Pharisee of Pharisees, praise God, he was considered a, 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 he was a Benjamite from the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was a powerful dude. He went from this big powerful dude named Saul to this little dude named Paul. Whether you know it or not, the name Paul means small. It means little. He was a big chief on the block. Amen. He was a, he was a Jew, a Jew, praise God. He, he was a master in the scriptures. He, he, he knew the things, praise God. He was the elite. He was a super Jew. But when he met Jesus Christ, he found out that he was just a little man named Paul. All right. But God downloaded yes. the systems of the kingdom into Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And Paul, when he wrote the church at Ephesus, which you can look at Acts chapter 18, 19, 20, you can see the story of how Paul, in the third missionary journey, he, he, he opens this church called the Church of Ephesus. Praise God. We found out he did miracles in that church. Handkerchiefs were brought to him. People were being healed by handkerchiefs. He cast out demons. He started a big riot because Paul said, for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. Apostle Paul understood that he was the church. He was the body of Christ in the earth. And he wasn't ashamed about it. Amen? Amen. But when he wrote the church, he says, grace be to you and peace from the God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to understand he was in prison when he wrote this. He in prison telling the church, I hope God continue to give you grace. I hope God continue to give you what you don't deserve because I realize that don't none of us really deserve anything. That's what Paul is saying based on the fact that he knew it. He said, I pray that God gives you grace. I pray that God gives you peace. Not the peace this world gives you. At the church, we got a different kind of peace. Our peace is not horizontal. It can be, but if our peace is not peace vertically, we'll never have peace horizontally. If I don't have peace with God through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I really don't have peace. I can live, matter of fact, I can live my whole life down here in horizontal peace with people and trying to please people. But at the end of the day, if I don't have peace with my Father, I really don't have peace. All right. So he said, grace and peace, right? Yeah. From God the Father. Grace, somebody say, grace comes from the Father. Grace. And, and peace yeah. comes from the Father through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, blessed be the God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The word blessed means to speak highly of. Right. He said, blessed be God our Father. That means to speak positively, to speak highly mm -hmm. of God the Father. And of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, I'm blessed already. I'm the word H-A-T-H, hath, is past tense. God hath blessed us. I'm already blessed. The problem is, when we begin to look at ourselves and to compare ourselves with the world considered blessed. Blessed is peace. Blessed is joy. Blessed is reconciliation, being reconciled back to God. Those of us who were dead to sin and trespasses, that's blessed. Blessed is eternity in heaven with the 
Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I mean, let, me, let me talk about it a little bit more. Let me get a little deep. Going. See, right there, we should have just lost your mind when you realize that, that it's, a, it's a done deal. Already. <laughs> you got everything that you ever need for every situation, every circumstance that you ever have in your life. And you can tell who the mature Christians are because by the way we react. Some people react as if this already been solved. Some people react like it's not been solved. Mm, that's good. Amen. So if I'm a Christian and I'm confused, praise God, it's not because I'm not blessed. It's because I haven't realized and got in the word as it pertains to whatever circumstance I'm going through and found the answer was in Jesus Christ way before I even got here. So according as he has, watch this, blessed us everything in heavenly places. So your, your bank account, right, is it, it, not, it, not South Shore Federal Credit Union where I bank at. No, I'm a, I'm a Christian now. Any man that be in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So my address is sort of changed. My address is in heaven, sitting in Jesus Christ on the right hand of the throne. All right. I didn't say that. The Bible says that. In right. Ephesians chapter 2 and 6. He's made us raised up to sit together in heaven, place in Christ Jesus. So my address has been changed. My bank account has been changed. So now the things that I desire, somebody says, all spiritual. He blesses us with all spiritual things in heavenly places. All right. yes. God is a spirit, and those who worship him is in spirit and in truth. When we look at the book of Ephesians, you'll see Paul prays a few times because he wants God to open up our eyes of understanding that we be enlightened, that we may be able to understand it because this thing is really spiritual, and this thing really is not natural. We try to pick it up in the natural, and we'll never figure it out. That's right. God's word is spiritual, y'all. He yes. says he has chosen us. Somebody said chosen. chosen. He had in verse 4. That's past tense. And the Bible says... According as he has chosen us, somebody chosen us, somebody say past tense. past tense, in him before the foundation of this world. God chose you, Sister Peaches, he, he chose you before the foundation of this world, right? That you should, so, so, so past tense, he has, and we should, that means in the future. He did this in the past, but there was something that we needed to do in the future. Somebody say future is right now. So, so right now, what should we do right now? I've just been looking at this last night, just looking at the word that we should. Okay, he did what he was supposed to do, that we should. Now, since he done what he was supposed to do, we should be holy and without blame before him. Somebody say holy. holy. That's the inner relationship. And without, somebody say out. So the inward relationship, watch this, we got two things going on. So how is it, Maria, that I'm in two places at the same time? God, you done told me that I'm living down here even though I, I, I live in the flesh. I don't war after the flesh because the weapons of my warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. So what I'm going through, watch this. I'm going to need to tap into heaven in order to bring it down to earth in order to get my victory. Yeah. I'm not going to get my victory down here fighting with flesh and blood because I got to tap into my heavenly sources in order to get the victory that I need down here on earth. Yeah. Watch this now. He said that we be holy, watch this, before God and blameless before me. Mm. So my inner relationship is holy. My outer is right there in chapter 4, right there. Foundation of the world that we should be because he did what he's supposed to do. He has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should now, somebody say right now, right. I should be holy, holy. Before, him. before him. Without blame. Without Look at your neighbor and say before you. Before you. <laughs> I, I need to be blamed. Before you, but I need to be holy before him. So we occupy two spaces at the same time. Watch this, the verse 4. That we should be holy and blame without him. Praise God. So he predestinated this. So that word according, right? I'm looking at these words last night. According as he has chosen us. The word according is the same root that we get this, this musical term from chord in harmony with. So God chose you. In harmony with God's pleasure, with God's purpose, and with God's power. Amen. Amen. According to how you are in sequence, you, 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 you are, it's like a symphony. You are working in accordance to God's plan. His power and his presence. Somebody say I'm blessed already. We're we going to get that before we leave here. He, he, he predestinated us, man. We had no influence over what God did in our life. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. 
Said a whole bunch. Amen. Said a whole bunch. We didn't have nothing to do with this shape. He predestined us unto the adoption of children. You know, people have, I hear people all the time saying, man, I had another one. I wasn't expecting this baby. If anybody had a baby, they wasn't going to raise it. <laughs> Get off into that baby. <laughs> that baby, but they, they wasn't planning on having it. Right? People have babies all the time, and really, they, if they could, they wouldn't give it back. But, amen. People have babies they don't own all the time. But nobody ever adopts a child that they don't want. All right. That's true. Yeah, I'm looking at these words. I want to pick them out word by word. And I want to see line on line what God is saying about me and how blessed me and my church really is. I want to find out so we can walk in this world and be victorious in our life. And Satan won't reign over us. And he won't be able to seduce us like he did in the Garden of Eden. And he won't be able to try to pray God against God because that's what Satan did. See, God, Satan knew that God loved us. But Satan knew that he hated sin. So Satan said, if I can ever get in what God hates, then God got to hate what he loves. Mm. Ain't that something? Since God is God, he hates sin. Satan said, if I get in him to doubt him, to make him doubt God's word, he's still doing the same thing every day. He said, if I can get in him, then God got to hate what he loves because God ain't going to change his ways for no one because he's immutable. He never changes. Okay. So God is pre-testing and predetermined that you are who you are. He did it, and you are holy, and you are without blame before him. Why? Because he did it before you even got here. Mm. Boy, I'm telling you, man, I'm blessed. Amen. I'm telling you, people need to begin to say that. I'm blessed Amen. already. Amen. No matter what anybody say, I'm blessed. Somebody say already. already. I'm already blessed. That's what I want you to get out of today. Because he chose you before the foundation of this world. But he chose you in him. Right? That we should be holy and without blame before him. We're occupying two places. We're down here living in this chaotic society. We're down here living in this paganistic world that we're living in. And we have to navigate our way around this situation. But you know what? Stop trying to navigate your way around it and start going through it. Because the word of God will take you through it. And not around it, not over it, not under it. We can go straight through it when we know the word of God. The word of God. Somebody said I'm blessed already. I'm, I'm blessed already. Amen. I got two young men with me in church back there, Keenan and, and, and Brother Cornell back there. I want them to be able to hear what God is saying to them about the church of Jesus Christ. It's not a place that you just come, fellowship, and sit down and clap and leave. You become a part of an organism, and it's a part of a living function in the earth that you two can own the football field, transform minds and transform coaches' heart, even through the game of football, because you are a member of the body of Christ. Yes, yes. It means something to be a part of the body of Christ. Not just me that I go to church. I've been chosen before the foundation of this earth. That I should be holy. That word nobody about said he given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. People love the life but hate the godliness. No, God says I want it both to work together. I want to give you life. Yes, Zoe. Jesus said I come that you may have life and that life more abundantly. That's Zoe, Z-O-E. That means the God kind of life. The nature of God. Also come to give you life and that life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. But he said, I give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. God wants us to live a godly life. Yes. Look at Jesus and how he walked around, not judging people, not putting people down, but praying for people and giving good illustrations and using his own self. Uh, he made his own self a doormat so people can walk across him so that they could come. He looked at people and he saw these people and he had compassion on these people because they looked like they were sheep having no shepherd. Mm. That's what I see when I see boys on the corner with their pants down. That's what I see when these young men and young women come in my, in my gym. I see sheep having no shepherd. Yes, mama dropped them off. Yes, daddy been good to them. Yes, they have both mother and father at home. But something is missing. And when we miss it as people of God and to look outside of the physical and begin to see and discern the spiritual needs of people, that's when we become the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Chosen, not wasn't chosen for me. I wasn't chosen for me. I found this out in recently. He said, I've been faithful for a long time, almost 20 years, and he chose me for me. No, he ain't chosen me for me. He chose me for him. Because it was before I even got here. Amen. 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 So, so what we really need to understand is we as Christians, we live and we operate in a fight that's already been won already. Fight is fixed already. We go into glory. 
with Jesus. Amen. So Satan, I was saying earlier, created this dilemma that, that now God would have to hate his own creation. If I can get into Sister V and she realized she ain't got to forgive Boo because what Boo did was wrong. If I can get in there and I doubt because the word of God says she got to forgive Boo. Mm -hmm. If I can get inside of her, God can't bless her not forgiving him. Praise God. Because now Satan then got inside and said, don't forgive. All right. But the word of God she read every day said, forgive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Satan, that's how he does. I'm just using a broader illustration of what he did in God. He knows that God hates sin. And he knows that God loves man. But if he said, I can get inside of what God loves, then God has to hate what he loves. So if I can make you doubt, yeah, the Bible said what is not of faith is sin. What I'm trying to say is the word that's been consistent around here, let's get into the book. Yeah. The book got all the answers. Yeah, so don't nobody choose you. You know, back in the day, we used to say, man, if you're, you're going to go, man, I choose this girl, I chose her. <laughs> yeah, he chose me back in the day, a little bit older. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, you got chose, right? <laughs> but man, I've been chose by somebody. Say, I've been chose. I've been chose. By the king of kings. By the king of kings. And by the Lord alone. And by the Lord alone. Amen. I've been chosen. Been chosen. Before the foundation of this earth. Yeah. How do I know that, that, that God already took care of this dilemma? Mm. Because the sin part, somebody says sin is still creeping. Sin is still creeping. Sin is still around. And sin still show up, no? Yes. Sometimes we. No, I said it. Sometimes we sin. Yes. But the Bible says we have an advocate yes. who sits on the right hand of the Father. Thank you. Yes. And he ever lived mm -hmm. to make intercession. Mm -hmm. Satan tricks us by looking at somebody else's sin huh. that we just got over two years ago. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's the truth. And it gives me this false sense of security. Mm -hmm. Help us all together. Give us this false sense of security. No, 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 no. That sin, this sin, my sin, your sin, all sin. All sin, God hates it. Yes, he does. He's immutable and he never changed. That's right. So the minute I see him, I say, the minute I see her, God, thank you, I'm over that now. Mm -hmm. But this stuff I got going on, help me with this. That's right. I'm saying this because in reference to we're talking about being chosen, if I've been chosen by God to be holy and blameless before you all as I walk, yeah. right? And to be holy before God because we occupy in two spaces, teaching is repetitive, so I'm going to continue to repeat it over and over again. That you occupy in two places at the same time. Mm -hmm. But God going to bring both of them before you. At the end. Yeah. Both of them people going to come together. Oh, yeah. So we, 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 we realize that we've been predestinated according to God's plan for our life. In accordance, like a, a, a chord playing in a symphony. In accord with God's good pleasure. In accord with God's purpose. And according to God's power. We are in accordance with it. I'm speaking to your spirit, man. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes. Let nobody tell you what you're not. Mm. I tell you what you can't do. Read your Bible and tell you, look, man, I don't know what you're reading, but what I'm reading right now Come on. is that I've been chosen by God. Yes. I do yes. not deserve it. I am a sinner from day one. Yes. Paul said he's the chief of sinners. Mm -hmm. But I thank God. And he dealt with this in Revelation chapter yeah. 13, verse 8. And he said, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of this earth. Hmm. So before God said, Let there be light, the answer was already given. It was a Lamb that was slain before the foundation of this earth. Somebody say, Amen. 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 I think sometimes we think God is like, 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 like a, a, a contract. When you got something wrong with your house, electrical, Hank, you call an electrician. Right? You got something wrong with the plumber, you call a plumber. We thank God like a contract to come fix this stuff and stuff in my life. Mm -hmm. God is the architect. Yes. God can show you anything he is in there. Mm -hmm. And he did a finished product, and our finished product is eternity. Yes. 
So I don't care what else goes wrong with this plumbing and this electrical and whatever goes on in this stuff. God is already the architect and he had already set it up that you're going to spend eternity with him. Why? Because I've been chosen. Somebody say, I'm blessed already. I'm blessed already. Amen. Somebody say, I've been adopted. I've been adopted. We need to understand that we, we've been adopted by the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to share with you some stuff that has already happened to you. Verse 6 says, to the praise of his glory, wherein he has made us accepted. Somebody says, made us. Made us. Accepted. accepted. Amen. He has made us accepted in the beloved. Man, you know what? Sometimes people have a lot of low self-esteem children. You know why? Because they're not accepted. Mm -hmm. But if we tell them at home that you are accepted in the beloved, mm -hmm. amen, you are accepted by the most exclusive club on the planet. Mm -hmm. There's no other club like the beloved. Right. You've been accepted in the beloved. Amen. amen. So, young people, you don't need to be accepted by the crowd when you've been accepted by Christ. Right. Amen. And I want you to know you've been accepted by Christ because he called you. Amen. And the Bible says, all that the Father has given me shall come. And I'll know why it's cast him out. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hmm. He's made us accepted. You're accepted in the love. You're accepted in the family of God. Keep reading. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption... Through the blood. Amen. Amen. Somebody said we have redemption. Stop worrying about your current condition. Start focusing on your eternal position. Stop worrying about your current, your current position. And start thinking about your eternal existence. Amen. Stop worrying about it. Somebody said God already worked it out. So through redemption. 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 You don't have to be dominated. I don't have to be dominated by sin. We've been redeemed. Amen. Somebody say, I've been redeemed. Somebody says, I've been redeemed. In my mind, I need to understand where my mind goes, my life goes. Where my mind goes, my life goes. Where my mind goes in according to the scriptures in sequence with being delivered from sin, my life goes in the direction of being delivered from sin. Let this man be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He wasn't putting on the show down here. But he humbled himself and became obedient to the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. The world can tell you three steps to get success and how to come up. No, the quickest way to come up is to go down. Yeah. God, he, he, he exalts those that are humble. You give grace to the humble. Amen. So, remember, wherever your mind goes, your life goes. So, you've been redeemed. The Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord has set free from the hands of the enemy. How many people have been set free from the hands of the enemy in here? Let me see you give God a hand clap of praise. Because you've been set free from the hands of the enemy. Somebody said I'm blessed already. I'm blessed already. I remember a time. People don't want to talk about how bad it felt and how cold it was in the dungeon of sin. Sometimes people like to over glorify what Satan did. I don't want to over -glorify. All I know it was jacked up. It was based on my decision because I was raised in church and I had a choice. And I am the reason that I fell into the traps of my own life, given a choice, knowing at a young age, praise God, what God had to say about certain situations, I still choose them. So it's our fault. But guess what? God had a remedy to bring you out because you, before you even made one bad mistake, you was already predestined, you was already chosen, you was already adopted. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Based on his predetermination. Yes. Because he's God. Yes. Based on his foreknowledge. Because he did it already for you. I'm going to say this until I get blue in the face. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why God keeps having me going repetitively over who we are and who we're supposed to be in the body of Christ. Because we don't talk about the first three chapters, the doctrines, but then in the second three chapters, we're going to talk about the duty. Walk worthy in the vocation that we were called. Amen. Stand fast in the liberty where you've been. We're going to start talking about how to walk it out in the second three chapters. But in the first three chapters, we're going to talk about doctrine. We're going to talk about how God needs to open our minds up spiritually so we can see what we really have in Christ. Yeah, we yeah. start realizing what we have in Christ. We don't want nothing. 
So when God is able to get all the world out of us and get all of him into us, then we're ready to walk around here as the church, man, that's dominant in every situation. Satan has no victory over. Then we can say no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Amen. Amen. When I get the revelation that you ain't fighting against me, you ain't fighting against Josh, you fighting against an almighty God. Amen. Kingdoms of this world should become the kingdoms of our God. We won already. It's a fight, but the fight is fixed. And it's about you understanding who you are in God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hmm. I might be done already. I may stop. Hmm. I ain't gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> Having predestined us into the adoption of his children. He predetermined that that right there, Christine, that blankety blank, whatever she was. That one right there, that beautiful, young, dark, long hair, because he's seen the end before the beginning. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, that's cold, right? Yeah. He's seen the end before the beginning. I was reading somewhere, and somebody said that they always shoot the last shot of a movie before they even do the first scene. Just mm -hmm. read that. Man, he does something. He know the end before the beginning. So he chose you and his family. Before you ever went out and did the stuff you did. That's what so, somebody said, I'm blessed already. I'm blessed. I hope y'all leave edified today. I really hope you leave charged today. And then we need to go in the book and we need to find out everything about God loving us all the way from Genesis to Revelation. We need to see the plight of, of, of people like Joseph in the Bible and how Joseph went through the storms of life. Never did anything wrong seemingly but still had to go through. We need to look at people like Job. Job was an upright man that stewed evil. Then we need to look at people like Ruth. Then we need to look at the boars, and then we need to look at, at all the kings in the Bible, the Sauls, and, and we need to look at the at, at the uh, Absalons mm -hmm. and, and the Jodadabs, and people call themselves our friends that come along and give us a plan, and then they're gone, and then Absalom mess around and raping us. We need to read about all these people in the Old Testament as well. But one thing I want you to realize, you're blessed already. Yes. Yes. You blessed before any of that yes. stuff ever took place, but all that stuff did take place, and guess what? It all had to take place yes. in order to bring forth the intended will of God yes. in your life for today. Yes. And He left all that. Amen. All of it had to take place. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We, we got to remember that, though. I want you to remember that. Don't forget wherever your mind goes, your life goes. So, really, your, your mind can liberate you because you've already been liberated. But until I line up with the fact that I've been liberated, I stay stuck in bondage. Amen. Yeah. Somebody said, God got me out. It's a problem if people still think they can get themselves out. <laughs> no, God got you out. Amen. 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 So, verse 8 says, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. We talk about the word abounded. Somebody say overflow. overflow. Somebody say prudence. prudence. It's wisdom acted out. Prudence is wisdom acted out. So abounded means overflow. Prudence equals wisdom acted out. So God says, look at you, Christine. You're blessed already, but Christine needs abundance. She needs an overflow. He gave you, he said abounded. He gave you an overflow, right? More than enough so that your blessings can overflow and so that others can be blessed by your life. He gave you an overflow that you may be able to minister to other people. Come on, y'all. See, the people don't see this as a, as, a, as a part of the blessing. I got an overflow. I'm abounded in prudence and in wisdom. Hey, prudence is wisdom acted out. So I got the knowledge, but the wisdom is knowledge applied. So God, I got all this head knowledge, but show me how to get this head knowledge out to my feet so I can begin to bless folk. Amen. But he said he already did that too. Amen. Amen. So come on, let's just be the church. Come on, let's just be in the earth what the earth needs. Come on, let's just be in the earth. No, it's not going to be easy. Look at the book of Acts and look what they had to deal with in the book of Acts. Look at the book of Corinthians. Pressed on every side. Cast down but not destroyed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. We are the church of the living God. We are the house of God. We 
your glory. Yeah. Been redeemed through his blood. He couldn't deal with us if we hadn't been redeemed. If he hadn't rescued us from a life of being dominated by sin. But God did this so he could sit back and say, look what I've done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Not going to stop, man. Not going to stop, God. I thank you, Lord God. May known us the mystery, God, of your will. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. Carry Christ is in you. The hope of glory. You carry something in this earthen vessel. It's treasure in your earthen vessel. That the glory may be of God and not of us. Yes. We carry the deposit of Jesus Christ. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. You carry him in your life. On the inside of you. We all got out of basketball. The alabaster box got perfume, but why we keep decorating the box? Why don't we break the box so the perfume can come out? We all are like a grain of seed that need to fall to the ground and die because if not, it abides alone. But if the seed die, get down in the ground and get crushed by the hard and sudden ground, and then the cracks come in and then the rain come on it. If we're not able to go through the process of the seed dying, then we'll never bring forth all the stuff God told us we had today. process of this seed dying. Amen. Die to my fleshly desire. Die to what I think about somebody else. And be alive unto what God said about somebody else. Be dead to unforgiveness. Be alive to forgiveness. Be dead to lying and be alive to the truth. Everything God says we can do in this word, we're going to discover it and we're going to say, that's what? We're going to develop it. We're going to discover it, what he said. We're going to develop it into our already reborn again spirit. And then we're going to turn it loose and deliver it to the world. So we're going to discover somebody. This is discovery. This is discovery, y'all. This is discovery, Mike. We're going to discover what we got in Christ. And then we're going to develop it. And then we're going to deliver it to the world. So the world can say, hey, you know what? It is such thing as a church. And they don't have to have no name on it. That just... That's just rising. That's just, that's just, that's just boo. That's, that's just, that's just Papa Don. They just got a name. But really, they, they the church. Yes. Amen. 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 Father, come in Jesus' name. I'm done. God in spirit gave us enough right there to deal with all week long. All week long, God. We can deal with the fact that we've been chosen before the foundation of this earth, God. And we should be holy without blame before you in love. In love, Lord God, because both people are before you, whether we know it or not. The holy one and the one that's supposed to be blameless, but before you. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children, Lord, by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure, Lord God, of your will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted. God, we thank you for redemption. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. God, we thank you, Father God, that we are bound, meaning we have more than enough to minister not only to our families, but to everyone we come in contact with, Lord. But it was all in accordance to your word. God, thank you today for this word. Bless us, Father God, going out and coming in as you've already. We say we are blessed already. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.